Good morning, friends. I am once again back. This is your president, Mr. Raghavinda Das of the All India Contonment Come Bangalow Owners Association. Today, I will speak on a policy which was drafted way back in 1957. And you will be surprised this policy was not in the hands of the Ministry of Defence. When I met the MOS Defence along with the Defence Minister, they were stunned bound that this policy existed. Now, what was this policy made by the first Defence Minister? The government agreed on this policy and you will be surprised to know today that a law can be repealed but a policy cannot be. Always what a government can say is that we are not adhering to this policy anymore. So a policy once drafted is a law for always. And government cannot revert back that they never thought about it. So the draft of the policy speaks like, on a very simple note, I will speak, that it says, let's convert all lands within the cantonment boundary pillars of these 57 cantonments into freehold. I am again saying all lands. Now in 1957 we had a civil area of the 1938 rule 2 and we had a bungalow area. Now this policy very clearly said if a bungalow on either sides, either on old grant, second either on lease on both the sides, bazaar or bungalow area can be given on freehold. But what will the government charge for it? Friends, the same policy can be seen on the website of the association if you go on it. So I'm not going to show you the uh, policy. This I would request all of you to go on the website. In the speech which I had spoken earlier in 1955, the then Prime Minister had very clearly said, let us abolish Commander-in-Chief post which we inherited from the British. And let's go by an army council system. Things didn't, be, uh, things didn't come through. So then Mr. Krishnan Menon moved this policy. And this policy was converting these grants, OGBs, into freehold. What were the terms of this grant? Some people think it is only for civil area because yet the policy there is for civil area. But has this policy for bungalow area become redundant? How can the government come up and say that it has become redundant? This policy, if you merge into the SK Bose Committee report of 2020, it very clearly says that even today on financing or funding or budgeting of grants for the cantonments is a big financial exchequer expense. This was way back in 1957 also, which had only been 10 years of our independence. And the resources were to be used in the right way. So even today, these lands, these old grant properties can be converted, they can be sold, the HORs present holding on to them can buy them out and this, will, this entire amount which comes will be credited to the cantonment fund. And this cantonment fund is for the betterment of the cantonment. So it eases the government on its exchequer expense and the funding of those grants. Everything can be stopped. If the Ministry of Defence wants that they should be in a better financial position, I think they should adhere to this policy. And on to the local requirement of the area or the land in these uh, cantonments would one day be converted into military stations. Now, how this policy operated? It's, now, I'll talk of first the bungalow area. So, bungalow area had two sets of properties. One was the old grant property and one was the leasehold property. Now, when it came for the old grant property, it said, the land beneath, please listen to me, the land beneath your main bungalow, authorized, could be converted into freehold by giving the 10 times of the STR value. Second was, the land beneath the main bungalow plus the adjacent area if the HOR demands which the local military authority says that yes, they can release that area not exceeding the bungalow area 
could also be added on to the freehold right on the same terms of the 10 times of the str similarly when it came for leasehold properties again it was the same equation and the same parameters that the land beneath the main bungalow of the hor now the question was 20 times the str so there was a jump now this was a case where the lessee had paid had paid a premium amount when the lease was given to him now similarly in this also the lessee could ask for the extra area from the lease main uh, building provided the local military authority approves it similarly 20 times of that str will be paid by the hor but there was a clause in these now if the lessee at the time of taking lease maybe 1889 1912 onwards and he had not paid premium on the lease then this amount of 20 times will be 25 times so it increases similarly in the area for freehold if he ask is going to be the same so when it comes to 20 times or 25 times the leverage given to the hor was that he could pay it at one time then he is reverted back to 20 times but if he is will not willing to pay it at one time and he will be only given four equal installments with an interest of 6% and this property becomes freehold. So bungalow area could be made freehold. Now coming to civil area what were the terms. Now land beneath the main building or the shop, house or whatever. Again the HO was, was given the right that five times the local STR of the can. He pays up and it becomes freehold. Now if he wanted an area which was not for construction purposes, it will be an undertaking that will always remain open area, can be added to this shop or bungalow or whatever his area was of the main building. Again on 5 times the STR. But when it comes to open land, it will be 25 times the STR. So there is a change. No, no, no more 5 times, but for open area, 25 times. Now if it is a leasehold property in the civil area or the bazaar area. The terms are same. Below, the, be, below your main building or shop, what is your area? You pay 20 times of it of the STR, provided if you have not paid premium. You can again ask for some area open to the shop in your adjacency, but that should not be converted into construction. It will always remain an open area. You pay 20 times here for that also. So the clause, when it goes minus the premium in lease, the amount increases 25 times the STR. So friends, again, there was a clause of that same 6% 6 interest if four equal installments like the bungalow area. Friends, this policy is very important and we can always brush to the system that when this policy existed, now it has been made redundant. So what are, we two, what are the two things which I had said that the vision of the association or this team should be when we go forward to the ministry, we go for a demand. I asked for only two things. I said, once the bungalow area is needed for military purposes, acquire us under Land Acquisition Act. We will not dispute the ownership. We will not go to the court. You simultaneously pay us our compensation. We simultaneously move out of the bungalows. Now coming to civil area, I had simply said, release that entire civil area like Ambala Cantonment and other six cantonments which I mentioned under the 1957 and 61. Balwantrai Mehta and H.C. Dasa, Dasappa reports in the parliament. So civil area can be. Once this civil area goes out of the containment, imagine the Ministry of Defense which is sitting on a, on a time shell bomb 
there is all the kind of expenditures in this civil area once this is released how much money does the cantonment board need the cantonment fund and the grants are not required if you come down to umbala it's a is a visitable sitting example that the cantonment funds here are very meager because they retained back one area of royal house or horse artillery area bazaar which was called the top khana bazaar so let the civil area go out the economy and the economical position of the ministry of defense will improve the exchequer government of india's expense towards giving grants in form of various schemes for the betterment of the society would actually be given by the state now because land will become a state subject in this so with a small happening everything can be done very easily but why the government is not thinking in these terms is a fast guys i don't know why is it this departmental people the ids or the dg lands doesn't want this to happen because they have their own desires and whims and fancies to hold back to this area this area is not at all for use of the military so why are they holding it back so there is a question mark to this holding back and regarding bungalow area i very clearly said our demand is you want our bungalow for specific defense purpose but not for making a horse riding club or a school or a pole vault game holder army should not be doing these to or converting it into an army mess these are not specific defense purpose or public purpose let the army come and acquire it we will randomly give it to it so this 1957 policy would actually ease everybody and the disputes the lingering on in the cantonments various number of course cases i was just seeing on the uh, government of india site limb.com uh, government in where all the court cases of the cantonments are uh, exhibited we have more than about 3 lakh cases going on so what are we doing friends let's get up let's put this demand of the 1957 policy ahead i would only say now in my closing comments i'm always available any information any guidance towards your bungalow towards your leasehold property i am always there you can call me 24 into 7 on the number given below you please do not feel hesitant i have been told by some telephone callers which have been calling me after seeing my videos that there are some people in the present association who are passing a remark that mr das is a very expensive consultant for my bungalow owners i become a consultant if they are in problem with the court cases or with the notices prior to that i am only looking for their evidence i am only looking for their guidance i only built up your evidences so that tomorrow when you face anything you do not have a problem so please don't hesitate call me anytime i am always available and together we will make a difference thank you good day friends